Hello everybody, I've got great news for you today. You know, there's a joke that starts something like, I want to order two rums to room 222, please. Which is a play on the word two. Well, today I'm excited to show you the new features in MPS 2022.2. So make yourself comfortable and enjoy. First of all, the Kotlin implementation in MPS has made a great progress. You can expect countless improvements in the editing experience. Just start using Kotlin in MPS and experience them yourselves. I want to focus on three type system related features that show the power of the code rules type system that is behind the Kotlin implementation in MPS. Okay, the first one, you can easily deconstruct You know, a structure or an array into variables and a type system will understand that. So if I now do a, a should be a string and you know surely it is. So the code completion gives you the string related operations and the type system knows a is a string just like the others. Well, the next one, function g takes a closure uh, that takes a string and returns an integer. So if I now call g and uh, now I pass it a lambda and in that lambda I can now refer to it and the type of it is a string. So obviously we can now use string related methods and properties. Last, but definitely not the least, function f takes a lambda which has an implicit receiver, a list of integer. A list of integers is the implicit receiver of that lambda or that closure. So we can do, we can call f, now pass a lambda to it. And now in here, we can either do this dot uh, contains, you see now we're getting all the uh, properties or functions that are available on this. This is the implicit receiver, which happens to be a list of integers. So we can go this way, or obviously we can just go contains without this, it will still um, understand the, the implicit receiver. Now there's, uh, before we move on, a, a few little things that make life e your life easier if you work with Kotlin and MPS. The, the way you handle numbers or edit numbers, you know, like you prepend the, the minus symbol or you type flows just like that or with strings you can hit enter and now you have multi-line string also the compiler has been better integrated with mps thanks to this capability i can now show you a real treat here is a good old robot sample project that comes bundled with mps now inside of the intentions aspect i can now use kotlin to write S model code. So I can manipulate nodes and concepts in Kotlin now as part of the usual models that are part of a language definition. So what you can do here and how does it look like? At the moment, you have to put all Kotlin code it's in separate files. You can't add it directly into your intentions or behavior code. You have to create separate rules. And now the classes or functions you create in Kotlin, well, you can then call them from base language code of your aspects. So let's see what we can do here. Um, well, I create a function and pass in a node. So with Kotlin syntax, 
the type for a node is just the name of the concept. So like that. In base language you have to say node and then point brackets and in pointed brackets you specify the concept. In Kotlin you can do it just the standard way as if abstract command was just a usual type even though it actually is a concept. You have an alternative view if this is too puzzling for you. So with an intention you can convert that into a regular node type and then it might be it's more chatty but maybe more intuitive or more in line with how things are done in base language as model so you can use the long and sh or short notation here for concepts so if i want to pass in i want to declare a parameter that is a concept a concept type so there's a traditional concept construct like that now once you have those you can just do the usual s model things All right so containing root cast to I named concept dot name this one right dot whatever or we could test the type so if n is a repeat I remind you repeat is a concept of the robot language has a count property and a body which is a command list say if n is that now without any further cast i can just access its properties or children or references so i can print n dot count now kotlin is a very powerful language one of its features that I like is uh, the ability to create extension methods. And this can also come in handy here in uh, the MPS Kotlin implementation. So for example, I can create a function number of repeats on a repeat concept. All right, so now this method normally you would add such methods to behavior but here let's say it's only useful for me here in the intentions aspect so i can create a function and pretend the function is de declared on repeat concept and inside the body of that function i have full access to repeat as the implicit con uh, receiver so i can go this dot and we have uh, we have count which is you know the property uh, the property telling how many times you want to repeat things uh, obviously body the body of that repeat loop is available as well and you can go without this like that you know, that count is really, if I go, if I navigate to declaration, it's really this count property inside the repeat concept. So now I've got this function declared. So if n is repeat, then in fact, I can call number of repeats and we're done. All right, so this is the method. So I'm calling the method as if it was a method of a repeat. Now, what can we do with the concept parameter C? Well, if you get hold of C, you can use it, among other things, to create new nodes. So like that, you create a new node. Um, you can specify a closure. In that closure, you can then initialize that node. Um, so since this is, uh, okay, abstract command, let's make it something else. Um, if 
statement from the robot language. So now I should be able to access condition. And now I could perhaps initialize condition in some way. That's it about Kotlin for now. Let's move on to some other cool features. I'm sure you noticed in the previous releases of MPS that we considerably improved the annotations functionality that allows you to see the history of a particular piece of code in the context of who changed what and when. In this release, we added a minor improvement to that functionality. Now you can manipulate the annotations from the inspector window as well as from the main window. And all the features that you are used to in the main window in terms of annotations are available in the inspector window as well. So you can do things like annotate particular revision or annotate previous revisions. When you're opening a new project, a project you haven't opened before, MPS will now prompt you whether you really want to open that project, whether you trust it or not. If you don't trust it, you don't open it. Otherwise, you trust it and this choice will be remembered for the next time you open the same project. Alternatively, you can check this checkbox to say that you trust all the projects in that directory that is parent to the, uh, to the project that you're just opening. The base language in MPS took inspiration from IntelliJ IDEA, where they offer what they call postfix transformations. So you can type some predefined set of words at the end of an expression and it will magically transform that expression. Now it works in base language as well. For example, here I've got an expression return from a function with implicit return. If I want to make that return explicit, I can just type return at the end of that expression, or I can obviously complete that. And now return is prepended to the expression. I've got a return expression here, a return statement. Similarly, if I want to test string, the parameter I'm getting for being now, I might type that expression and now I want to turn it into an if condition. I just type if. And I've got an if statement. In such a case, we can return, let's say, minus one. And, and again, return with an explicit return here. There's a couple more. I can wrap an expression in parentheses if I append parent parents keyword or I can have a for loop inserted like here when I've got arcs I have an ar argument I have arguments as, as an array and I can type for at the end and I've got a for loop or we could have a variable created out of a, a literal by appending var to it I think it's pretty neat in documentation, you can find a list of all those that are currently available. One additional small feature or worth mentioning, you can now apply styles to base language comments, single line and multi-line comments. So you can have text in comments, underlined, bold, italic or not italic, depending on your preferences. So you use Ctrl U to underline Ctrl B to make things bold, Ctrl I to make it italic or non-italic. Now in combination with the ability of comments to turn blue if they are to do comments, now you have quite some power to make your comments easy to read. I like this little feature. Okay, that's it. These are the most prominent features of this release. Obviously, there's more. Just check out the release notes for all of the features and enjoy this new release. Goodbye.